Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It's that boy G playing. Don't give a damn. He cooler than the fan. Walking real tall. Some say he's man. We both, man. What's going on, man? I am the natural. Yeah, man. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, the natural, man. T-H-A, natural. You know what I'm saying? OG Funk Sway. Straight up, straight up. So, mm -hmm. we, where we at right now, man? Shit, right now we in the land, man. Yep. Welcome to the land, man. H-Town, Northside, Afghanistan. You know what I'm saying? The Enclave. You feel me? Straight up, straight up. Now, and speaking of Enclave, I saw you had it on last night. Like, is it like a group or something? Or? No, the, the Enclave is actually the, the, the facility. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um... <clears throat> And not to say that we're better than anybody else, but you know, uh, the enclave is a is a society within a society, you know, of a like street of a distinctive, you know what I'm saying, group of individuals. Yeah. You feel me? So we're not better than anybody. We just a little different. Yeah. You feel me? And different is good. Yeah, for sure. You know, one thing I had to learn to respect was individuality. You feel me? Straight up, straight up, straight up. Uh, so, I want to get straight into it, man. I was told that you from L.A. Originally, yeah, born and raised. Yeah, how, how was it like growing up in L.A.? In LA? Shit, fast. You know what I'm saying? I was exposed to a lot of shit at an early age. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, <clears throat> growing up in L.A., seeing a lot of the things that I saw, you know, my mom being a prostitute, my dad being a pimp and a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Having birthday parties and shit in pool halls. You know what I'm saying? As a kid. Wow. You feel me? I mean, it was it was a motherfucker. It's crazy. So, so how did you end up in Houston? Well, my dad is originally from, from Houston, mm -hmm. from Studiewood, matter of fact. You know, him and my, my grandmother, they moved to the to the land, well, I'm going to say to, to Los Angeles in the, in the late 60s. <clears throat> my mom and her mom and sisters and shit, they moved from Toledo, Ohio in the 60s. You know, and uh, her and my old man, they got together. And uh, eventually, you know, I started getting in trouble and shit. Yeah. You feel me? And my grandmother, she felt it necessary to me, you know, for me to move back. I moved to Houston with my dad, you know, to keep me out of trouble. But shit, that ain't yeah. have nothing. So right now, how, how long have you been in Houston right now? Well, I've been in Texas since 86. So, it's 2018 now. Mm -hmm. However, uh, 22 years of that time was incarcerated in TDC. I uh, spent like 11 months in TYC. And, and, and you did, you say you did 22 years? Yeah, 22 do you years. Wanna, do you want to speak on it and what happened? What, why did you do it? <clears throat> it's, it's all up to you. I mean, shit, I did it protect one of my partners. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I caught a body in 91. You feel me? I ain't gonna go too in, too much in detail, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I caught a body in '91. You feel me? Got a life sentence. I had to do 15 years to come up for parole. You know what I'm saying? But when I came up, they gave me a five year set up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up doing 20 flat before I came up for my second parole, and then got approved for parole. However, I had two uh, two cases mm -hmm. that I caught while I was inside. And it was three and a thirteen years in the state, so I had to make parole on them hoes too. You feel me? Man, speaking of that, man, like you, you did twenty two years. Get, get out. How was it like readjusting to society? I mean, it was a challenge. Yeah. It's still a challenge. You feel me? <clears throat> Going from living in a controlled environment where pretty much your meal is already set for you, you know, your your day schedule is already made, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so you only have like maybe 100, 150 decisions that you have to make, you know, independently, like on your own, mm -hmm. you feel me? Opposed to coming out here now and then you having shit, 10,000 decisions to make a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a big jump. A lot of people may not look at it that way, but you know, when I order my food on commissary, Shit, it's already, you only got four or five different soups to choose from. Five or six different chips to choose from. You know what I'm saying? Five or six different cans of different types of sodas to choose from. What type of hygiene products and shit you want to use. It's only a certain list of what you have to choose from. Opposed to coming out to the free world and shit, you walking into Walmart, 
and now you got a whole fucking aisle full of chips of assorted assorted kinds. Now, which one you gonna choose, nigga? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you having to make, you know, a conscious decision now opposed to you already being knowing shit, they only got five types of chips. If they got a new type of chip shit, I'm automatically gonna fuck with that, but I got my own shit that I fuck with. Yep. All right, and then you come in out here and you don't know what to eat. You don't know if you want Chinese food today. You don't know if you want soul food. You don't know if you want seafood. You don't know what the fuck you want. You know what I'm saying? So getting adjusted to that shit, getting adjusted to now you going from uh, what time you're going to shower. You already know what time you're going to shower inside the prison. Mm -hmm. But shit, with all different type of activities and shit going on here, you don't know what time you're going to end up showering. You know, you're going to shower when you first get up. But shit, you might do some ripping and running or whatever the case may be. And she, you know, it's just different shit going on every day. You know what I mean? Which event you gonna catch? You know what I'm saying? Who you gonna spend time with today? You know what I mean? Who you gonna visit or who gonna come over to the house? Or you can't have certain people over. It's all different type of shit. Now you gotta deal with your woman. You gotta deal with your children. You gotta deal with people. You gotta run businesses. I mean, shit. It's a thousand different decisions now opposed to a hundred decisions. That's a that's a great adjustment to try to make. Mm -hmm. But I want to I want to take to the music side right now at the moment. Like when when did you start rapping or like or when did you decide like I'm a I'm gonna take this stuff seriously? Well, shit. <clears throat> while I was in prison, feel me. Uh, I started rapping while I was in prison. Uh, actually, the county to be exact. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I started really taking it seriously once I got to prison and I started running into niggas that was real good, like for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of those guys were like my Muslim brothers. You feel me? So in the Islamic community, I mean, talent be like, be yeah. dumb. Shout out to Rallo. You feel me? He going crazy. He going crazy. For real. Oh. Shout out to Rallo. You feel me? Shout out to everybody that been down through that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the same time, like, nigga, we doing shows and shit, you know what I'm saying? Putting on concerts and shit in prison, you feel me? And then with me being, you know, under the, 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 the living under the circumstances that I was living under, I was on some break free of trying shit. So I was always looking for different ways to try to, you know, make a dollar to help my condition, you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I was trying to sell my music, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I got Palm Top Studios and shit snuck inside, you know what I'm saying? I recorded a mixtape on a Palm Top Studio, you know what I'm saying? Four track recorder, you feel me? So <clears throat> I was trying to get my shit together so I could push it out, so I could try to get a dollar to help my, 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 my defense, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Help fund my defense. So that's the type of shit I was on. You know what I'm saying? So that's really when I started taking the rap shit seriously because I was trying to use the shit to get a bag mm -hmm. from inside, though. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people know about the struggles that we have outside, but a lot of people don't know that a motherfucker struggling inside to get back out. That's a whole nother level of struggle, especially when everybody up in that bitch, you know, living under the same conditions. You know what I'm saying? And everybody trying to get out but some niggas don't want to see you out because they feel like they ain't gonna never get out. True. You know what I'm saying? So they don't want to see you with another chance. I want to ask you this, you know, like you're saying in prison, you got set time, set schedule. So basically, all during that time, you had nothing, nothing to do but think about rapping and, and what your game plan was going to be. When you got out, was it the same, like, discipline? All right, I'm going to spend this much time on my raps. I'm going to spend this much time here. Or it was like... I'm just everywhere right now. Since I got all the free time to do what I want to do since now I'm out. Well, <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, I always live as if I'm 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 living off borrowed time. You feel me? I always move like I'm living off borrowed time. Cause the nigga don't know how long this shit gonna last. You don't know how long you're gonna have to have an impact on whatever the situation is, on whoever's lives it is, you know what I'm saying? What your situation is. You know, so I kind of move like when sh shit is urgent all the time. You feel what I'm saying? I'm I'm very seldom like a days ago about anything. You feel me? But um, nigga, when I came home, when I 
shit, I was on a monitor 110 days. I recorded my first mixtape while I was on monitor. You know what I mean? So every Sunday, I'm having an opportunity to go from my house to the other side of town. You know what I'm saying? To go record in the nigga living room. You feel me? But by the time a nigga wake them up and get them out they sleep because they been up all night and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit, two hours didn't pass. So once a nigga really get into the floor of rapping and recording and shit, you know what I'm saying? Shit, it's time for me to burn off because I got to fuck with traffic trying to get back to the north. You know what I'm saying? So, shit, <clears throat> I was on it from the beginning, recording with him, recording with my little, uh, and that's D. Rude, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Shout out D. Rude, man. Rude is a movie. You feel me? Uh, Sachi Lu. You know what I'm saying? My little Kenfo. He bad. You know what I'm saying? Engineer, producer. He also an artist himself. But um, recording with them boys and uh, getting my shit together. You know what I'm saying? Even learning what an ad lib was. Nigga, I didn't even know what an ad lib was. Wow. Like, for real. And counting boys, did you know about that? I mean, I learned how to count boys in prison. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for yeah. real though, I learned how to count musical bars in prison too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about the music and you mentioned Muslim, whatever, right now, I mean, you got music out, but that Give Me Light record with Kevin Gates is going crazy. I saw it on World Star. We talked about it. And see, back where I'm from, in my audience, we love Ke everybody loved Kevin Gates. Everybody. But for sure. How, how did that come about? Because Kevin Gates ain't just giving out no, no, no features. Man, shout out to my little brother, man, first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? Peace and blessings, bro. Glad to see you home. For real. Um, <clears throat> I had two people who was tapped in with, uh, one was tapped in with Gates directly, the other one was tapped in to, to Ron. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? One of my partners here got a feature from Gates. But I was already listening to Gates' music. You feel me? I wasn't necessarily trying to get no music or feature with Gates. I wasn't even on that, you know what I'm saying, to be honest. But uh, <clears throat> once I found out my partner was tapped in the Gates and then turned around uh, Blaze, mm -hmm. which is my, my little brother, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> OG Feng Shui. Well, I'm talking about OG Feng Shui. Feng Shui Daddy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> um, he was locked in with Gates directly. One thing I believe is is in a, you know, I believe in common denominators. You feel me? So <clears throat> I had one entity telling me Gates, woo woo, nigga, I'm fucking with Gates, woo woo, so on and so forth. I got another entity telling me, man, Gates, woo woo, so on and so forth. Okay, so Gates had a show uh, downtown, and Blaze he said, man, Gates gonna be in town, come fuck with me, woo woo, so on and so forth. So, boom. I pulled up, you feel me? Shit, we stood on the motherfucking sidewalk for like three hours talking. Three hours? Kevin Gates? Yeah. That sound like you had a good conversation. This is this is after the after the after the show. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even know Mike Prince was with him. Me and Mike Prince was like two cells down with each other on beat up. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He did twenty, I did twenty two. Mike Prince did twenty? Yeah. <clears throat> so so boom, um, we talking and shit. So on and so forth, and so on and so forth. And uh, we turned around and went to V Live. All right, he told, he told Corey, you know what I'm saying, Blaze. Karma, V Live Karma, or V Live V Live? No, V Live V Live, he was Houston. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, when was this? This was shit, two years ago, three years ago. Probably yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> um, turn around, he say, shit, going to Austin, whoop, 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 so on and so forth. Nigga, pull up, whoop, whoop. Shit, we pulled up. You feel me? Shit, nigga. One night we went to the studio. About 11 o'clock, we ain't leave that hoe till like eight the next morning. Wow. You feel me? That nigga ran through like eight or nine features. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at this nigga get a bag, like, right now, nigga. You know what I'm saying? At this point, he don't even know I do music. Wow. He didn't even know I did music. Our conversation wasn't even about music. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> um, Turn around, Blaze was asleep. I just woke up. That nigga Gates went back in the booth. I'm sitting behind Mills. You know what I'm saying? Mills, he he recording it, right? So, boom, that nigga up in that bitch recording how we live. So, I'm observing, paying attention. You know, I, I'm fresh out. 
You know what I'm saying? So a lot of this shit I heard about, I ain't got a chance to just be up close and personal with it. You know what I'm saying? So this is really the first time I had the opportunity to be in the presence of a of a of a of a professional artist doing what they do. You see what I'm saying? So nigga, I'm taking notes. I see good. Turn around, I tell that nigga Blaze, wake up. I said, wake up, nigga. He said, what's up? I said, he finna give you this song. He said, what? That nigga Gates come right out the booth. Come sit down on the side of Blaze and give him a hook, verse, and an open verse with the hook at the end and told him to do whatever he wanted to do with it. Wow. Right? <clears throat> Blaze got on the, on the song, boom. Ate that hoe, you feel me? Now, how we live is out, you feel me? Mm. Turn around, a nigga got, shit, bought a whole pallet of motherfucking I don't get tired, energy drink. You know what I'm saying? He had that bitch sent to Houston, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Delivered. So, we start pumping them hoes, you feel me? Next stop was in Alabama. That's where the last part of his tour was gonna be. You know what I'm saying? Mobile and um, shit, we pulled up. You know what I'm saying? Went to Alabama, fuck with him, woo, woo, so on and so forth. Shit, I told a nigga, I want a feature. What's up? Nigga ain't even know I did music. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? So, shit, you say you want a feature? Me, me in Miami. Shit, we left from Alabama and went to Miami. Stayed in the same hotel room. I mean, same hotel and everything. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Matter of fact, every city we went to, we stayed in the same hotel. You feel me? Um, nigga, went to Miami. Shit, ran that hoe. So y'all shot the video while y'all was making the song, basically? Yeah, well, I already had the song. You know what I'm saying? I already had the song. And, um, turn around. Went to Miami, went to uh, Visor Studio, and uh, she he did his verse, shot the video, you know what I'm saying? Did the shit. He bled that. He he came on that on that verse. Man, he ate that. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> he really did. I mean, and, and and that's another that's another thing. Not to say that he come half ass on anybody else shit because I ain't never seen him just do no lazy and no sloppy work. You know what I'm saying? I respect the nigga craft and he take pride in what he do, you feel me? But <clears throat> he showed me how much respect he had for me by the way he fucked with me, you know what I'm saying? And how he fucked with my song. He ain't just putting on anything on my shit, you feel me? Yeah. So <clears throat> that also gave me another level of respect for him, you know what I'm saying, as a businessman, you feel me? But <clears throat> um, as a brother, you know, I have another level of respect for him because he ain't have to embrace me and fuck with me like he fucked with me. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Not to say a nigga no better than me because he'll tell you shit, nigga. He the same nigga. Only difference is he probably got more money right now than he did before. You know what I'm saying? But he he don't want you to treat him no different, nigga. Treat him like a regular nigga because that's how he going to act, like a regular nigga until it's time for him to get in his... Business. You see what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> and that's another thing. He keeps shit in perspective. So, it's a lot of shit that he showed me. You know what I'm saying? That I give a lot of credit to Gates for. You know what I'm saying? Because had I seen, had I not seen it from him, not to say that I wouldn't have seen it no other way, no other place or anybody else, but shit, he gave me access right then. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we've been out of different cities together. You know what I'm saying? Went and fuck with this man. This man got me in here with his family and kids and shit. Mm -hmm. He ain't gotta fuck with me like that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So I give him a lot of credit for what he enabled me to see, which brought my vision as well. Helped to, you know, coincide with what I already had my mind on. Whoa, whoa. And he also gave me the inspiration, nigga, keep grinding. Yeah. You know, the the video with Gates, that was the first video I ever shot, period. Wow. You know what I'm saying? My first real video, nigga, was with Kevin Gates. 